in the monetary analysis, we concluded that rapid inflation is caused by high money supply growth rate. Now, I'm going to discuss the Keynesian view. Keynesian analysis indicates that the continually increasing money supply will have the same effect on the aggregate demand and aggregate supply, which we have discussed in the previous case. The aggregate demand curve will keep on shifting to the right and the aggregate supply curve will keep shifting to the left. The conclusion is the same one that monetaries reach. That is, we can say that a rapidly growing money supply will cause the price level to rise continually at a high rate. So, generating inflation. The only difference in the monetarist and Keynesian analysis is that Keynesians believe that aggregate supply curve would shift leftward more slowly than monetarists do. So, the Keynesian analysis suggests that output might, might tend to stay above the natural rate longer than monetarist analysis does. Look at here, when we move from point 0.1 to point 0.2, the monetarists are of the view that the output might tend to stay above the natural rate lesser than the Keynesian because they are thinking that a quick shift will occur and we will move from point A to from point one dash to two if the economy is producing at Y dash or simply we can say that if the economy is producing at Y dash which is above Y N the economy will not stay for a longer time and we will move from point A to point B during a short course of time. This is actually the monetarist view. But what is the Keynesian view? Keynesians believe that the aggregate supply curve would shift leftward more slowly. It means that when the uh, original aggregate supply curve is A is one, so A is one will shift leftward to A is two more slowly. It means that it will take more time. Or in other words, we can say that if we are here, if the economy is producing at Y dash, then the economy will move back to Y end. It needs a long period of time. So this is the only difference. But now the question is, could a factor other than money generate high inflation in the Keynesian analysis? The answer is still no. Why? Because Keynesians are also of the view that the money supply is the only factor affecting the price level. We can, this result probably surprises us. Why? In the previous chapters, we have discussed that money supply is not the sole factor affecting or causing shift in the aggregate demand. There are other factors as well. For example, the fiscal policy or supply shocks. These are important factors affecting the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves. The question is why Keynesian also view that high inflation as a monetary phenomenon. We need to examine whether their analysis allow other factors to generate high inflation in the absence of a high rate of money growth. Okay, suppose if there is no growth in the money supply, what will happen? Let me discuss the case of fiscal policy. Suppose if the federal government increases its expenditures, what will happen? So actually in this figure, we are demonstrating the effect of a one shot permanent increase in government expenditures. Suppose the initial expenditures of the federal government's government are $500 billion. And now the federal government has increased its expenditures by $100. So the new government expenditures are $600 billion. Now we are entrusted 
to examine the effect of this one shot increase in government expenditures on aggregate output and the price level initially we are here at point one and you know that at point one the economy is producing at the natural rate level and the price level is p1 at point one aggregate demand ad1 and aggregate supply as1 touches each other or crosses each other at point one so we can say that p1 is the equilibrium price level and the economy is producing at the natural output level if the government expenditures increase what will happen aggregate demand curve will shift its original position from ad1 to ad2 it means that now we will move from point one to one dash the economy is producing at y1 dash which is above the natural output level at point one dash the output is above the natural rate level the aggregate supply curve will begin to shift leftward eventually reaching a is two because you know that there is a pressure on the economy and the particular economy will not remain permanent here on point one dash so the aggregate supply curve will shift to the left side from a is one to a is two it means that now we are moving from point one dash to two and again at point two the output level is at the natural rate level and the price level is p2 again we moved from point one dash to two and now at point two aggregate demand to intersects aggregate supply to where output is yn and the price level is p2 so look at here what is the change you can see in this analysis because with the increase in the government expenditures the aggregate demand curve has shifted from ad1 to ad2 and then again with the backward shift in the aggregate supply curve we moved from point a dash to point b where we have a higher price level because originally at point one the price level was p1 and now at the new equilibrium position at point two the price level is p2 so simply p2 is higher than p1 the net result of a one shot permanent increase in government expenditures is a one shot permanent increase in the price level from p1 to p2 so what happens to the inflation rate when we move from point one to one dash and then from point one dash to point two the price level rises and we have a positive inflation rate when we are here at point two where continually increases its expenditures what will happen there will be a continual rise in the price level but the question is can the government increase its expenditures up to an infinite number the answer is no it affairs that keynesian analysis could reject friedman proposition that inflation is always the result of money growth but the problem with this argument is that a continually increasing level of government expenditures is not a feasible policy the government can't do that like for example in the first year the government initially the government expenditures are uh, suppose 500 billion dollars then next year 600 billion dollars and then next year 700 billion dollars next year 800 and so on so this is not a feasible policy because if the government can increase its expenditures year by year we can see the increase in the price level it means that the keynesian analysis here rejects the monetarist analysis because here the monetarists were of the view that the money supply is the sole source of increase in the price level when we are discussing the keynesian view we didn't change the money supply we have increased the government expenditures it means that 
the money supply or the quantity of money is fixed in this analysis and we are just changing the government expenditures so if we can change the government expenditures continuously couriers so we can get a continuous rise in the price level if this is the case so we can conclude that the keynesian analysis rejects the monetarist analysis but no why because the government cannot increase its expenditures continuously over a sustained period of time why because there is a limit on the total amount of possible government expenditures and the government cannot spend more than 100 percent of gdp for example maybe the government expenditures are 30 percent of gdp if next year 40 percent then 50 percent then 60 70 the government cannot increase its expenditures more than 100 percent of gdp that's why we are saying that if the government increases its expenditures one time a temporary increase in the price level will occur and this increase in the price level is not a sustained increase it is a temporary it is not a permanent that's why we can say that yes the keynesian analysis supports the monetarist analysis because there is a limit on the total amount of possible government expenditures and in fact the political process would stop the increase in government spending so that's why we can conclude that yes the keynesian analysis also supports the monetarist analysis and the only reason behind the higher inflation rate is the money supply what about the other side of fiscal policy for example if the government reduces the tax rate so what will happen could continual tax cuts generate an inflation again the answer is no suppose if there is the increase in the inflation rate will be only temporary if the government cuts the tax rate we can increase the price level by cutting taxes even more but this process would have to stop once taxes reach zero if the government reduces the tax rate so this reduction in the tax rate is a single shot or maybe the next year a double shot but there is a limit the government cannot reduce the tax rate up to the zero level what we can conclude from the keynesian analysis we can conclude that keynesian analysis indicates that high inflation cannot be driven by fiscal policy alone or in other words we can draw a conclusion from this diagram that if we increase the government expenditures by one shot there will be a one shot increase in the price level and we can say that the increase in the price level is temporary this is not a sustained increase in the price level that's why we can say that the keynesians analysis support the monetarist analysis at point two the inflation rate returns to zero we see that the one shot increase in the government expenditures lead to only a temporary increase in the inflation rate we can say that the one shot increase in government expenditure leads to only a temporary increase in the inflation rate not to the inflation in which the price level is continually rising that's why we can say that this is a temporary increase in the aggregate price level but this is not a permanent increase in the price level